My name is Thomas Holland, and I'm in a really good mood. This is the 2018 MX-5, and it is easily the most fun that you can legally have in a car. The Mazda MX-5 simply does not do boring. You have to hand it to Mazda. In a world of crossovers and pickup trucks, they continue to make a joyful, non-compromising roadster. And they've even managed to make the engine look good without any flimsy plastic covers on it. Now, Mazda offered me the RF, which is arguably the better looking car, but I'm a fan of the soft top, and that cherry red is new this year. I like how quick it is to go up and down, and there are a few other advantages I'll talk about in a minute. Mazda has also made the 7-inch touchscreen infotainment standard on all models this year, so that's nice. But the thing that I like the most about the MX-5 is that it continues to be sporty and practical all the time. You can easily store a week's worth of groceries in the trunk, or if you're like me, you'll just eat instant noodles all month because you are hauling around racing suspension for your track car. The engine is torquey and does not possess any of the pitfalls of its Toyota slash Subaru rivals, however, it is maybe a bit low in the horsepower department for the money. But any issues aside, the MX-5 is still focused on one thing. Everything about the MX-5 is just fun. And I'm serious about that. There isn't a single part of it that I don't like when it comes to the driving experience. All right, let's kick right off the bat with how light it feels. I am an NC generation Miata owner. And for those of you that know your Miatas, there's NA, there's NB, there's NC. NA is the one that has the pop-up headlamps. NB is the one that came after that. NC is a generation where the, the front ends kind of looked like this, right? Or like this. And the NC has a really big reputation for being the biggest and the heaviest of all of the MX-5s. This generation though, the ND, which has been out for a couple of years, continues to be light and fun like the old ones. And I get to rag on the NC because I own one. They are heavier. This car definitely feels lighter and more playful than the NC generation Miata. The steering is definitely lighter than the NC and it is electric. And I wouldn't say that it is quite as uh, communicative as the NC generation. The hydraulic steering just has a little bit more feedback coming through the wheel. You can almost feel the chassis flexing. You can feel the suspension movements in the front through how the wheel kind of kicks and bucks. This wheel doesn't really do that as much. However, that can be changed with different tire setups and alignment setups, so I'm not gonna give really into that. The point is, is that everything about this car is light in a really good way. Sometimes we like our cars to be heavy and strong and brutish, and that's good. But when it comes to an MX-5 and you're on a back road like this, you want the car to dance. And this car dances with the best of them. This one is the MX-5 GT, and if you're just looking to have fun with your MX-5, you don't need the GT. The GT has extra stuff like these leather seats with the cool stitching, uh, Sirius satellite radio, uh, some uh, Bose sound system, which is actually quite good, and a few other little kind of uh, convenience and comfort features all around the car. However, uh, on the GS trim level is when you start to get into the good stuff. You get Bilstein dampers. It's actually really cool. You turn the wheel, look in, bright yellow Bilstein damper. It looks like something that you would put aftermarket on your track car. You also get a limited slip differential. Please do not buy an MX-5 without an LSD. That is really the core of this car. Power to the rear, limited slip differential, steering in the front is uncluttered by any form of drive shafts, and you get the purest driving experience that you can possibly get. Look at me, going into the twisties like this, the front end just kind of dances into the corner. The stock MX-5 has a quite a lot of body roll, but that is not a bad thing. Never let anyone tell you that the body roll in an MX-5 is bad, ever. It's not. It actually plays into the character of the MX-5. It's what you want. It allows you to feel the chassis movement, it allows you to feel the suspension, and that is what makes it so incredibly predictable and easy to drive at the limit. Now, I haven't driven this one at the limit, but I have tracked and autocrossed several different ND generation MX-5s now, and they are just a joy. They are so easy to drive fast. I don't know how else I can stress that to you. There are cars out there that are faster, but they are more difficult to drive fast. And I would say that maybe they could be more rewarding. But the thing about the MX-5 is that it doesn't try to fight you. 
it will simply let you know if you do something a little bit wrong with a little gentle slap on the wrist. And then you can adjust your driving, learn, and become better with the MX-5. That's the beauty of this car, is that it teaches you proper driving because it is so forgiving and it is so correct in its balance. It is so correct in the way that it delivers power that it just knows what's right and what's wrong and it tells you clearly. That's the best part of the MX-5. So the body lean, do not run away from that. Do not go, oh, it's lean, look right now. Wee, leans on the corners. Another corner here, down into third gear, turn it in. <laughs> I can feel the whole thing going like this. It pitches and it dives and it rolls under acceleration and under braking. But that is what you want in NMX5 because since the car is so light, the whole thing is just fun. What about how the car looks? I think this is a fantastic looking car. In fact, I've had tons of people stop and like you can you can see that they like they get up the courage to say it one guy was in his truck and he pulled up beside me and he, he looked like he wanted to say something i kind of like smiled at him and whatever then the next set of lights he's like all right okay he was this big guy in a truck it's like he was admitting it to himself not to me he says like you know what that's a really good looking car i just wanted to say that and then he like drove away really embarrassed <laughs> This MX-5 has a $200 cherry soft top option. I like the soft top MX-5 personally better than the RF. Yes, the RF is better looking. However, the soft top is very good for a couple of reasons. Number one, there is less wind noise when the top is down. The RF actually has like the scoop up there for the retractable fastback and it just, it's like a scoop. You hear it go all the time when you're driving. That gets old really quickly. And I think that the cherry soft top with the white paint, the pearl white paint, one of the best MX-5s that I've ever seen. And that's new for this year. You couldn't get that before. That's a no brain option if you ask me. I would put that cherry soft top on anything. So what's under the hood? Well, it's still the two liter 16 valve four cylinder engine that makes 155 horsepower and 148 pound feet of torque. Both of those fingers are reached at a fairly high RPM, which means thankfully you have to run out the gear to find it. That's not a bad thing in the MX-5 because all you want to do is run out the gears. And the beauty of the gearing and how slow the car is, is that you can run through first, second, and third and not be anywhere near bad speeds on the road. Not very many cars you get to flat out run through second gear and not be breaking the speed limit. That's hilarious. It's so good every single day to drive. Speaking of shifting, this is probably the best shifter I think I've ever used. I don't know if they have improved it for this year. I don't think they have. Previous NDs were very, very good from what I remember, but for some reason, there's something tighter about this shifter this year. I don't know what it is, and it is easily the best shifter I've ever, ever used. There's something about this, it's so positive and so snappy, so predictable, that it's just a joy to use. Actually, the whole shifting experience is pretty much perfect. There's no rev hang when you shift through the gears. The revs fall quickly in between gears. The pedals are spaced absolutely perfectly for heel toe downshifts. The revs rise quickly, the throttle response is good. You can nail four heel toes in a row with this car at full braking without breaking a sweat. Listen, I'm gonna brake and I'm gonna downshift. I'm in fifth gear right now. I'm gonna go into third to enter this bend. Fifth, braking, fourth, third. That was two heel toes in a row. No jolt in the car whatsoever, perfect. Back up into fourth and off we go. Down into third, heel toe, brake, turn in, love it. I'm gonna slow right down and go into second. Down into second, perfect, literally perfect. Just the easiest I have ever, ever shifted. My car, which has like solid engine, it's a BMW. For those of you that don't follow my BMW build, you probably should. It's really hilarious. I mess up all the time. My car is constantly braking. Anyway, I have an E46 generation BMW and it brakes all the time, but I've done everything I can. I put solid engine mounts, solid transmission mounts. I've got an aftermarket shifter and it's still garbage compared to this Miata. So what's it like to live with the rest of the car? I don't find these seats to be the best. I find that they're a little bit narrow for my bottom end. Uh, I'm not a huge guy, but I'm not the smallest either. However, I've heard lots of people say that these seats are comfortable for them, so I'm not gonna give it really that hard of a time. Um, 
the problem with, that I have with the driving position, which I believe, I don't know if it's 100% yet, has been addressed with the, the, the 2019 MX-5. This steering wheel does not telescope, okay? So I can't quite get the perfect driving position that I want. I find the steering wheel is a little bit too close to my knees, right? But I still have room underneath here and room for my legs to be comfortable when driving and shifting. Okay, I've reached the gear stick perfectly, reached the real handbrake perfectly. So everything is reachable and comfortable. No issues there whatsoever. The climate is an absolute cinch to use. Three knobs. We've got temperature on the left, fan in the middle, and then where the air is going on the right. No mysteries there. No searching for anything. Really, really like that. Mazda's infotainment is okay. I've got a home button. The, uh, the actual home screen and the infotainment totally, totally looks like the DVD menu for a, like a Blade movie in the late 90s. <laughs> it's really dumb graphics, I'll be honest. It's not my favorite. I definitely have come across infotainments that I find to be a little bit more intuitive than this. I do like having the, the knob down here though on the side. It's just kind of a, you can sit back and cruise and relax and change the radio station or turn up the volume, whatever it is. And we've got the buttons that take us to the different places. So we've got home, navigation, and music. Once you're in the music area, oh, see, I'm getting a call right now. Look at that. Oh yeah, by the way, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna answer the call. Sorry, mom. Um, right now, the, sp the speakers are coming right here, right behind my head. It's very loud for you, I'm sure. It's loud for me anyway. But the music and the, the phone comes through these speakers. Okay, I'm gonna ignore that now. Sorry. Um, the music comes through these speakers and so does the phone. So you can f carry on a full conversation. I've had no one complain yet with the top down and the windows down. That's awesome. So I can be cruising and just answer the phone and talk normally and you don't have to yell. They've positioned the, the microphone in a really good place to carry on a conversation when you're cruising with the top down. <laughs> That's fun. So you know, so absolutely no interrupted top-down cruising time. That's important if you have an MX-5 because that's really what it's all about. Uh, under music, it's fairly straightforward. You kind of got to scroll through the bottom here. However, this screen is also a touch screen, which is really, really nice. So if you don't want to deal with this knob, you just touch the screen. I found the screen isn't really super responsive. It's like it was designed as touch screen second, knob first. That's kind of the, the vibe you get when you try and use it. Anyway, back to the ergonomics. Everything is comfortable in here. We've got a nice spot for your arm. The shifter is right there. What I do kind of miss from the NC is the location of the cup holders. I don't really like where we're at right now with this. They're, they're movable, you can remove them. One goes over in the passenger side leg well. And you, if you have a larger passenger, you can't have that there when they're there. So that means it goes right back here behind you. And it's not easy to take, here's my, my T, it's not easy to, 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 to get it when it's behind you here. So this is kind of, don't do that while driving, right? That's where the, the, the drink goes for you and the passenger. It's really not the best. So you can't really cruise with a coffee if you have a passenger. The NC used to have cup holders here and in the doors, which people complained about, but I don't mind them at all. Anyway, so I do want a sip of my tea right now. No one's coming. There it is. Not the best, don't really like that. I feel like there's gotta be a better way of uh, integrating that into what we've got going on here. The buttons on the steering wheel are actually really well laid out, and I don't have any issues with them whatsoever. Cruise control on one side, and uh, volume control, and controls for uh, audio here. On my center gauge cluster, I've got three dials. I've got a nice big tack right in the center. Thank you, Mazda, that's the way that it should be. I've got a speedo off to the side, and I have a screen actually on the left, which tells me my engine temperature, my fuel, and my fuel economy. And I can push this info button and scroll through the different things. I'm getting actually really good fuel economy. I'm getting 7.3 liters per 100 kilometers, and that's almost exclusively city, right? And it, it's, an, it's an MX-5. It seems like no matter how you drive it, you still get that fuel economy. It's not like with, with some performance cars, in order to get the fuel economy, you have to really, really baby it. I haven't been. I've been driving it like an MX-5. Back roads, having fun, doing all the stuff. And I'm still getting 7.3 liters per 100 kilometers. The car has lane departure warning, which I turn off immediately. Because when you're kind of like cruising around in a back road, you come close to the line sometimes. And I don't, it beeps at you really easily. One thing that I thought was really, really good of them is that if you turn lane keep assist off, 
it does not turn itself back on when you restart the car. That's very important because I don't want to have to always turn off a feature that I don't like. We also have blind spot detection, which works very well, and one button traction control, which is very important because the MX-5 truly comes alive when you turn off the traction control. With the limited slip differential, the Bilstein dampers, in a perfect weight distribution, this is an easy, easy, easy car to drive fast. If you have one of these, I implore you, take it to your local autocross course, find a track school. I work with the Pinnacle Advanced Driving Academy, you should look them up if you are in the Toronto area. You want to get your car on track to really, really experience what it's capable of, and you have an MX-5, you really should look them up to actually get this thing to the limit of what it's capable of to experience what you're missing on the road. It just totally changes what you think a car is capable of. My name is Thomas Holland. You've been watching Throttle House. Make sure you check out all my BMW build videos as well as my One Track Mind track review series where I take performance cars and put them head to head on the track. I recently did a Stinger versus a Mustang, which everybody's up in arms about because the Stinger, I won't ruin it for you. You can watch it. However, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any more car reviews like this. I've got car reviews coming all summer, all winter, tons and tons and tons of different cars, lots of stuff coming up that you are going to like. Thanks for watching Throttle House.